I've searched the world right. and I have found nothing right. better. Yes. I've been in places, I've been at the very lows of lows and I know that there's nothing better. That he's the only one that can turn my ashes into beauty. Amen, hallelujah. He's done it for me over, over and over again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's because of the blood, amen, and his mercy and his grace.
neighbor and tell them, you're getting ready to be blessed. <laughs> Come on. Everybody say, I'm going to be blessed today. It's a free gift. Why not? You may be seated if you'd like. Such a joy to just be around the presence of God and the expressions of people that have been set free and let them, let them glorify God in public. Let everybody know they're not ashamed of how good God is to them. Nobody loves you like Jesus. Nobody will ever bless you like him. Nobody can save or deliver and he paid the price with agony and blood so that we can have life. And I'm, I'm glad that we have it more abundantly. How many of you realize every year we come around to this time of the year and we celebrate Independence Day? Everybody say freedom. freedom. How many realize after all these many, many decades, there are still some people that are not free? Am I right? There's still people that are bound here in their mind. And even though our country has become free and maybe declining back into some bondages, but how many of you realize the blood of multitudes of men and women have literally laid down their life so we can be free today. When I see the flag, it's not just a piece of cloth that represents the blood of those that laid down their life because they honored freedom. Some have traveled in other countries, as Brother Adam, and some of you understand you got family and friends that may not have got back home. It's a very precious day. It's a very honorable time. But how many of you know they did it so that we can have independence? Can I break it down a minute? How many of you believe it's about time that we find out who we depend on? Everybody say, it all depends on who you depend on. So independence means we're free from anyone controlling our life. How many glad you're more free than you used to be? How many of you are free to come in and sit wherever you want to sit? And if somebody don't like sits by, you can get up and act like you're doing a prayer walk and go move on. <laughs> just a thought, just a... <laughs> Don't write that down. Don't tweet that. That's not good. But this has been a very powerful, precious time. I mentioned that last uh, month was one of the busiest times, me being away, because I traveled from the time I was 16 years old with my family across the nation, and Kathy and I were married. We traveled so much, and then now it's been weird to travel by myself. Everybody say, God help him. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it's a lot faster to fly than it is to drive. Oh, come on, you ought to say, let me act like you know how I drive, but that's okay. I want you to go to this because it's very important. We're going to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. God is speaking to this body, and I think we've noticed as testimony was given about the ministry of Wake and what God is doing. I just want to say thank God for everybody that is in tune, that is willing to share from their heart something that connects. How many of you appreciated what Danielle spoke last Sunday? How many of you connected and benefited? And I just got to say thank you. I appreciate it so much. She stepped up and stepped in, and I got down south. My brother said, you got to tell that girl she got another fan in North Carolina. How many know the word of the Lord is rich, and it's exciting, and we do appreciate our labors? And as was mentioned earlier, Brother Brent shared with us at Bodybuilding. Some, the thing that I enjoy is it's a word for now. It, it's for the people that are here. How many know every bit of the Word of God is good, but there's sometimes you just need that special word and that special connection. So I want to say thank you for having your ear in tune. While you're turning to Second Chronicles, um, this morning really early, about maybe 4 or 5 o'clock, the Lord woke me with uh, something and just kept stirring it in my spirit about independence. How many of you realize we are free? Whom the Son has made free or set free is free indeed. But you have to understand, once the old man dies out and once salvation comes, you're a new creation. And then what's weird is you still have to live in this rotten world and you got to learn how that works. You have to make up your mind that the next time you're tempted or tested or all that, you got to make up your mind, I'm free. Everybody say, well, I don't have to go back into bondage. Say it, I'm independent. I'm set apart. And this is going to sound a little different today, but I, I thank God for total independence. How many are ready to be free in every area of your life? Come on, somebody say, I'm free. Somebody said free almost. No, how many know we're free, totally, completely free? And when you get to this area of Scripture, it hit me so hard. We're not anything special on our own, and the Bible is full of miracles, and they're not miracles because somebody was real good. They're miracles because somebody believed God. I want to declare this today. You're going to be free over all of your bondages from this day forward if you choose to believe the Word of God. 
Everybody say, believe it. And we realize that man shall not live by bread alone, but by, everybody say, all of it. Not our favorite scripture we put on the refrigerator, but how many know all of it is needed, and you can't just pick out a verse here or there. We have to submit to the word of God. And anything that God speaks to you is for your benefit. Look at me. God doesn't need anything. He's not sick. He's not bound. He's not confused. He's not depressed. We are. He paid the price to set us free, and it's absolutely a free gift because he loves us. I got to tell you, the Lord loves me a lot. I brag a little bit and tell everybody I'm his favorite. No arguments? Okay, you got two or three over there. But I got the microphone, so I win. Israel is, before we get to 2 Chronicles, Israel is being attacked by the, the foreign enemy. The giants of Gath are coming against Israel. They're not coming out for David. They didn't know that little boy. And so David hears and he witnesses a giant coming to take away freedom from his people, make him slaves, and take over the throne that one day he knows is going to be his. But David went forth to battle. Anybody know the story of David, a little bit of the story of David? And the Bible said he went out to fight a Goliath. What did he go fighting with? What did he take? A rock. He didn't take a whole lot. He had five rocks in the bag, pulled out one. How many of you got an army out there and you got five rocks? Uh-oh. What are you going to do when you throw the fifth one? So it wasn't David's ability or any of those things at all, and your freedom from your attacks and the enemy warring against you is not going to come because you're all that in a bag of chips. Your victory is going to come because you believe God is with you, and the Lord said to David, the battle is not yours. We need to stop stealing God's battles from him. He wants the glory. He wants the glory for it, but you got to get out of the way and stop and say, well, I didn't. No, he did it. When David threw that one rock and it embedded into the brain and the head of the giant, all of the other giants and all the other army turned around and left. I don't know what would normally make them run because only one leader is dead and they got a massive army. But how many, when the Lord is on your side, he can let the enemy see more than what they've seen and recognize if the Lord can cause a little boy to kill our leader. How many of you understand we don't have any hope of winning this battle because God is on their side. I want you to say it with me. God is on my side. He's not just on my side, he's in me. You think we're ever going to get that completely that he's in us? Say it, Jehovah in us. That's the hope of glory. Let me give you another point just to set this in your mind. So it wasn't David's ability or the massive group he had. It was he believed the word. Today we're going to get the word that is going to bring us the spirit of independence. The spirit of freedom from any bondage. How many know we're not slaves to Britain? We're not slaves to any other country. Am I right? But you know what? We can live in America and still feel like we're bound. God wants us to be free. I keep saying it, but whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Moses had led God's people, one stuttering, stammering man for 40 years, started out when he's 80, got all the way to the edge of the promised land, and all of a sudden it was time for him to pass the torch to his predecessor, to the man following him, rather. His name was Joshua. And God told Joshua to do something when they got to the edge of the biggest city they had ever seen in their life because most of these had come out of slavery. They, had, they were raised in the desert. All those 20 years old and under were children in the desert. They were born there. The old ones had died out because they refused to enter the promises. God spoke to Joshua, and he said, what I want you to do is tell everybody to be very quiet, take the ark of my covenant or my promised word, and walk around the walls of Jericho. Once a day, and then on the seventh day, seven times, 13 times. I said, well, how did Joshua fit the battle of Jericho? Joshua didn't fit no battle. Joshua believed that God said, when you walk around the wall and you're silent, because it's not about you, on the 13th time, I want you to shout. I don't know about all that stuff. How many when God says shout, that's what he wants? He's not deaf, but you need to shout. You need to exert with great effort what God said. You need to believe the Word of God. Everybody say, I believe the Word of God. Can you imagine all of God's children that went to the promised land walking around the city? It's so big that the Bible said the walls of Jericho were so wide, they had chariot races on top of the walls. That's bigger than any wall we have in Washington Courthouse. <laughs> Unless you know something I don't know. I need an amen right there. And the Bible said when they started shouting, God shoved all the walls down into the ground. God knocked the walls down. 
So what did Joshua do? Did he fight? No, he didn't even fight. He just walked in and took over. Here's why. Because he believed the word. Your freedom is not going to become because you're good at something or you're better than someone else or you read five more verses than the pastor. You're going to be blessed and God's going to release your independence because you believe the word of God. Everyone in the scripture that believed the word of God got a victory. It's the doubters that don't get it. It's the, the, the ones that don't accept the promise. Everybody say, I'm ready to believe the word of God. All of it. It's all good. Well, I don't have time to read it. Well, you have time to read the Reader's Digest that won't help you. Let's read the word. How many know it's, it's, it's awesome? Don't start off over there in the genealogies and the old covenant. Start in John. How many know he makes it very simple and it clarifies the whole covenant? I want you to get this because if you go to 2 Chronicles 20, it'll make it real today. And I want everybody to understand this. God wants you to realize it's not hard to please him. It's an act of willing obedience. How many of you know when you're obedient? How many of you, when you're a child, you know when you're disobedient? Some of you are grinning because your mama had a paddle or a switch or a razor strap or whatever was at hand. Anybody remember back when folks used to get whippings? We were the perfect generation. <laughs> Some of you still have scars to show. I'm not going to do that. We'd go in the bathroom and my brother Roy and I'd compare our stripes because peach tree limbs will make stripes. But I got over it. That's why I'm almost perfect today. I often say two more whippings and I'd be perfect. <laughs> Three. <laughs> Four. <laughs> 5,620. Read this before we close. I'm going to say, why are you saying that? Because I want you to get the rest before the neighbors eat up all the buffet. Came to pass after this that the children of Moab, children of Ammon, with them others beside the Ammonites, came up against Jehoshaphat, God's king for battle. There came some that told Jehoshaphat, the king, saying, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they be in Hazaz Tamar, which is in Gedi. Jehoshaphat feared. How many know when you hear a bad report, the first thing we do is tremble because that's the first thing that the human body does. And he said himself, he decided, first of all, to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all of Judah. He doesn't have to worry about fasting a long time because you've got three armies out there, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Three nations are coming against you, and you're outnumbered extremely. And he began to fear, so he sought God. I just got to tell you this. It's always okay to talk to God. It's always to seek God. Always put him first. And I love that because he recognized he was afraid, so he sought the Lord, and then he set aside a fast. And Judah de uh, gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, the nation came together to seek the Lord. Wouldn't that be nice if all of America would come together to seek God at one time? I think we'd have an explosion. I think we'd see a most precious, loving spirit we've ever felt in our life. We'd watch all of the promises for our family that's saved, not saved, or they're bound, or they're dying, or they're sick or in trouble. How many of you know it'd be a wonderful thing if God's presence was alive in all of us? In those days in the old covenant, Judah was the leader of that realm, and he began to, his people came together, and they were calling on God. It's funny that we praise God sometimes when we have to. How many of you, if you had an army around your house, how many of you would really pray? How many of you real serious? How many of you fast breakfast? Amen. And so he's declaring, we're all going to seek God. We're going to do this symbolic putting away our flesh and the craving for even food. And the Bible said that uh, when they were all gathered together, they were seeking the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Jude in Jerusalem, the house of the Lord, before the new court. They had built this temple to worship God. They had been slaves, came into the promised land, and now they built a place for God's presence. Oh, we all need to have a place for God's presence. And he said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God of heaven, and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the heathen? He's sort of asking the questions and reminding himself of how great God is. And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? I feel like stopping for just a minute and saying to somebody, no matter what you're going through right now, it's not bigger than God. Am I right? Haley sang the song that she did so beautifully at the Worth It conference for Paula, It Ain't Over. And this thing's not over yet. But we got a good report from Paul. Everything's going to be all right. Wow. I think she was very prophetic when she spoke that word. Amen. How many of you know God knows what you're going to face? I may have said this before, but she invited me to speak at the conference. And 
God gave me a word, and it was as we were preparing to close, and the message was very simple, and sometimes you wonder, Lord, this for this congregation, is this what you want? The Lord said, I want my people to learn to praise me by faith in advance. Amen. Don't wait until problems come. Go ahead and start now. How many of you know it's better to praise God in advance because he lives in your praise, and whatever's coming, he's got to deal with it because he's right there with you. How many know the Lord never loses? Yeah. Said out loud, he never loses. And I love this so much because he is reminding God, you're the God over all the kingdoms of the heathen. In your hand, there's power and might so that nobody's able to withstand thee. We're facing three wars at a time and three armies, but are you not our God? Did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and you gave it to the seed of Abraham? You gave this land to Abraham's seed forever. Everybody say forever. The promises never stop. If God makes a promise, it's for eternity. And now we dwell in this land and we built you a sanctuary for your name. And this is what we said when we built it. If evil comes upon us as sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, I'll also add any kind of a war or temptation that's come against your life. We're going to stand before this house and in your presence, for thy name is in this house. God, help us. Your name is in this house, and we're going to cry unto you in our affliction or when we're in trouble. Then you will hear and you will help. Would you look at your neighbor and tell him God already is hearing you? He never will fail you. Now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and the occupants of Mount Seir. These are the people you would not let in Israel invade them when they came out of the land of Egypt. But we turned away from them and did not destroy them when it would have been, in our mind, the right time. How many believe that God's time is always right? Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which thou hast given to us. You need to mark that or underline it if you don't have an uh, iPad. God wants us to praise him, even when we're scared. How many have ever had to trust God when you're scared or when it hurts? Come on, somebody say, even when it hurts. Look how they reward us to cast us out of the possession which you've given to us. I feel like saying it again. Some of you need to hear this. The devil can't take away what God has given to you. It's not about our goodness. You heard the singing today. It's not about our, our ability. It's about his. His mercy and his grace is greater than all of your sin. I mean, we've all sinned and come short of his glory, but his grace is greater. We don't have any might. In other words, there's nothing we can do and... We don't even know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And all of Judah stood before the Lord, listen to this, with their little ones and their wives and their children. Can you imagine knowing three wars are outside the gate? You got your kids holding on to your legs, and they're wrapped around your feet, and you realize, if this doesn't go right, I'm going to lose my family, and we're all going to die. That's the time to call on God. How many of we all have loved ones that need God? They may not know God, but you know God. So you stand in the gap. They may not be ready to serve him, but you are. You take the initiative to stand in the gap and make up. The, listen to this, verse 14. Then upon this very little known prophet Jehaziel, he was the son of Zechariah and the lineage of, of the Levites, he came to them and he said by the Spirit of the Lord, I want you to listen, hearken you all of Judah. Can I tell you today that what God is saying, he's saying for everybody in this room. If you're watching, he's saying it to you. Somebody say, every one of us. All you inhabitants of Jerusalem and those that dwell in the presence of God, you, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. If the battle is not yours, why are you worried? If the battle is not yours, why are you having a fit? Why are you getting a spell? Why are you getting depressed and anxious? It's not your battle. As a matter of fact, if God belongs to you and you belong to God, no battle belongs to you. The battle belongs to the Lord. You can lose. He can't. You can fight and fail. He can't. That's why we've got to cast all of our care upon him. Everybody say, cast all of your care. Don't let your heart be troubled. Go back and listen to that message. What is he saying? Don't get upset about it because it's not your battle. It's my battle, and you know I don't lose. Am I right? Reverend Ike used to say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. How many glad you've got God on your side, the same God? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Because of this great multitude, the battle's not yours but God. That's what God said to David, this battle is mine. Tomorrow go out against them. Behold, they're going to come down by the cliff Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerewell. 
In other words, he's saying, I want you to go sit on the top of the cliff and watch what I'm going to do. Verse 17 again, you shall not need to fight in this battle. I want to stop. If this is all I say and this is all you get, it's worth a month of preaching. The battle you're in right now, you don't have to fight anymore. Well, I've been fighting for years and I can't conquer it. Told you. Because it's not your battle. How many of God can cleanse your bloodstream? This precious one with the bleeding of the brain. How many know only God can just stop that up? Doctors could go cauterize or something, but how many of you know God can do everything? Am I right? Say it. The battle is the Lord's. Now, why don't you tell the one beside you, he's talking to you saying the battle's not yours. Get out of the boxing ring where you get your nose flattened. It's not your battle. Everybody say the battle is the Lord's. Think about it. If it's his battle, how many times does he lose? If he's never lost, you think he's going to start on you because you live in the courthouse? I don't think so. Listen closely. You will not need to fight, but sit yourself or stand still. Hardest thing in the world to do would be stand still if you got that rabid dog running at you. Am I right? But just stand in what you've been told. Stand by the word I've given you, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. It's kind of funny how sometimes we think prophecy is hearkened barely thus in some King James language. But today, this is a prophecy of everybody that's listening. This is God's battle. Say it out loud. This is God's battle. So I just need to stand still and watch what God's going to do. God said through this prophet, you will see the salvation of the Lord with you. How many of you know God is bigger than every battle you're fighting? He's bigger than the temptation. Anybody ever mess up in temptation and then you got tempted again because there's different circumstances, different places, different times? See, the enemy only has three gifts, precious gifts he wraps up to give to you. You know what those gifts have? Kill you, steal from you, or destroy you. I don't like any of those. How many of you don't want to be killed, stolen from, or destroyed? How many don't want that? Then why do we listen to the one that's trying to bring that package and drop it off at our door? Amen? The prophet Elvis used to, was it Elvis used to sing that song, Return to Sender, Address Unknown? You young people, Elvis was a famous guy that used to sing songs. He was better than me. Say it. Stand still. What God is saying today is very simple and yet profound. Once the Word of God is spoken, all you got to do is hold on to it. Is that hard? It's harder for some people than fighting because they'd rather fight than hold on. But your victory is never going to come because you're muscles. You need muscles. Amen. Somebody got a weird idea, Father's Day, that we needed to skip. All the fathers had to skip. I wish I had skipped the skip. In my brain, I could see myself, and I remembered what it looked like. Some of us did wonderful, and some did less. <laughs> I came off the stage and tore a muscle in the back of my leg, and I should have said, God, why didn't I obey you and just stay up here and be a facilitator? Come on, say it out loud. The battle's not mine. And I will never be totally independent from all that mess or free from all that mess as long as I'm getting my hands in the pot. See, if it's in your hand, it's because you won't let it go. Well, I know what it'll bring. I know it'll bring me trouble. Let it go. Well, everybody around me is hanging on. Let them go. Pray for them from far. Set the people free. Amen. How many of you don't have to do everything everybody else does? Amen. You're smarter than that. Stay with me. I'm brilliant. Trying to build you up a little bit. But he said, just watch, sit down, or, or stand. because You know, it's really hard to fight when you're sitting, but that's what he said. Just set yourself or stand if you want. I want you to get in a position you can see what I'm going to do because I am going to tell you, do not be afraid. You are going to see the salvation of the Lord. You know what salvation means in this? It's not about save from your sin. It's save from your enemy. Some of us are saved from our sin. We've asked the Lord, we've received him, but we're not free from ourself. How many of the biggest battles are right here between that ear and that ear? Am I right? You all have a world, and this is your world. I don't know everything you know. I haven't been through what you've been through. I don't even have those weird friends. Well, I don't even have those same acquaintances you have. 
my brother last year or two went through several strokes and he lost his memory completely. When he began to come back and get his memory back and was able to move fingers and talk and say some words, he picked up the phone when he could finally do that and he called and he said, I just wanted you to know that you're the only person in the world that has my memories. Kind of shocked me, but it's true. I don't know all of his memories, but I know from childhood until now that he's 80, I realize we have the same story, the same parents. We've been to the same places many, many times for decades, but you just have to understand something. My world is different than you. What you've been through is not what he's been through. So don't think everybody's the same. How many we're not all the same? Just look around. You'll see they don't even look like you. They wish they did, but they don't. Three face lip. Lifts and a lip job will make them look a little closer or not. <laughs> Help us, God. Here's what I want to say today. The Lord is saying, if you'll just stand still and believe my word, you're going to see my salvation. But I don't know how I can ever conquer this. You don't have to conquer it. He conquered it. Believe his word and just stand. Before you make another step, just stand. Having done all you can do to stand, just stand. Why didn't he say, go get a bazooka and why don't you go get a cannon because that's not the victory you're not fighting physical battles you're fighting a battle right in here say it the battle is the lord's he lives in me i pray it all the time lord let this mind be in me that was also in christ how many of you want the mind of christ did you know if you think like him you'll act like him and you won't do crazy stuff that he wouldn't do and when he says stand you just stand Well, nobody else is standing. He didn't tell them. He's talking to you. We think just because God's talking to me, he thinks Adam ought to do it. No. How many of whatever God's telling you, you do it. He'll speak to everybody else what he wants him to do. The timing is always right. Independence is coming into this room today. Say it. It depends. Don't let your mind wander right there. But everybody say, it depends. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, I thought all the God's word works. It does. It depends if you accept it. He told them, just stand still. What happened if they ran and grabbed a sword and tried to fight? That it got killed. That wasn't the plan of God. He didn't say, David, you need to get a big army and go out there and fight that big old ugly giant nine foot tall. He didn't do that. He said, yeah, I'm going to give you a word. I'm with you. It's not your battle. Throw the rock, boy. That must have been an awesome rock. But how many of you know the real truth is in Revelation, the rock was Jesus? It's a symbol that Christ is with you. Has he ever failed? Is he going to fail you now? Are you willing to stand still and see God's salvation? Is this making any sense? I'm glad it is because God woke me up (laughs) to speak it. The Bible said he put his face to the ground and Israel went out. And that day the Bible said they walked out to the edge of the cliff. They watched three massive armies coming from each direction. They're surrounded. And all of a sudden, God spoke something unique. And this is the way God's worked a few times in the the Bible. He caused all of these enemies to get mad at each other. (laughs) Ammon said, hey, that's Moab. I hate Moab. That man stole my wife. That lady stole my money. That one right there defeated. That one. And all of a sudden, they started falling in hate with each other. And they started killing each other. And Mount Seir said, I hate all y'all, which is plural for y'all. And before it was all over, those three armies killed themselves, and all God's people had to do is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to say it hard because if you get involved, you're going to lose. If you try to do it, you can't, and you've nullified what God wants to do. Stand still. Touch your eyes. Say, I'm going to see it. Eva, you're going to see it this time. I see it now. Isn't it amazing that God makes eyes so you can see how that little wet thing in there? It's a miracle, isn't it? Isn't it? Anybody take that lightly that you're fearfully and wonderfully made? I need Isaac here to teach us the message of the bee. A bee can go out of the hive and go around for a mile, pick up all kinds of nectar. Knows exactly how to get the box into the right spot, right to his little space. He's got a brain that big. And our brain is that big. And we don't know how to come home. Just a thought. I was talking to me if that applies. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to stand. And I'm going to stand real still. 
When I want to get involved, I'll say, no, I'm going to stand. When I look at him cussing, yelling at me and trying to tempt me, I'll say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. i got to stand right here. Why? Because if I stand still, I will for sure see divine intervention. How many know the battle is not yours? How many glad it's not yours? Anybody like to fight, get your nose broke? Anybody know? <laughs> Anybody don't like to bust your knuckles? Come on, I'm just trying to say, if you're tough and all that, I'm not talking to you. I don't like my nose broke. I don't like black eyes. I, I just, I'm sorry. I'm not a wimp. I just don't like pain. <laughs> I think what I'm saying is I'm real smart. Amen. How many of you don't like pain? Some people love it. Okay, we'll pray for you later. If you look at what took place when Joshua was told by God, all you have to do in this time of war, yeah, there's a massive nation out there, but I'm going to give you the nation. The only thing I want you to do is hear my word and then walk around your enemy. Come pass around about them. I mean, no seven is perfection. In other words, perfectly obey what I'm telling you. Just walk. And then when I tell you to shout, I'm going to fight the battle while you stand there and watch the walls come down. You know what's amazing about it? One woman inside that city, she was not the most wonderful or most lovely or the most high on the city council. She was the one that was the town prostitute. But when she heard about God, that all changed. The spies came in. She said, I've heard about your God. I want a covenant with you. They gave her a covenant. When these walls come down, you're the only house that's not going to be destroyed. Your family and everybody in your house. Everybody say, everybody in your, everybody in your house, everybody in your sphere of influence, everybody in your house, when the walls come down, the walls of your house are not coming down. Why? Because she stood. It's time for family salvation, and we're going to see it. Come on, stay with me. I'm ready for family salvation for my whole house. Even that one. Even the one that I have to really pray to like a lot. <laughs> Y'all in trouble because the clock went out on us. And I have no clue if it's time to close. It is. Kathy's pointing, yes. Let's stand our feet together for just a minute. The word of the Lord came December, January, and this is a promise he made to us in a word. There will be constant, unexpected changes all around you. Death, sickness, confusion, therefore you must live in my constant presence. I'm your safety. I'll teach you to adapt quickly to ever-changing world. I will keep you in perfect peace as you dwell in my holy presence or as you stand. Remember as Jesus' awful death produced all of your benefits, it wasn't you, it was him. So I will turn all things into your victories. My only plan is victory for you this year. Draw close. And receive them all. This is more real than it was when God spoke it. Let's bow your head today. Father, I thank you for such a sweet presence of your anointing. I thank you for a word that you've given to us that are fighting so hard and feel like we're losing the battle. You reminded us today that the battle is not ours. And we can't lose if we'll just stand still and let you do the fighting and the winning. God, you're untangling the webs that we have woven. You're turning around those situations we've created by our past warfares, frailties, flesh. I ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts to accept the free gift, the plan of your provision. Today in this room, we always give the most important opportunity in the world, the greatest gift of all. If anyone in this room has not yet accepted this loving Savior to be your cleanser for sin, the free gift that he brings with eternal life. Everything that you'll ever have need of is available through him if you'll accept him and let him live in you. Anyone in the room today that has not yet made that choice to accept him, if not, please, please don't leave this room without accepting the gift of eternal life. It's not a hard thing. It's just letting him love you. His blood cleanses from all sin. Once the sin is gone, you'll remember it and regret but God will never remember it against you again. It's totally a free gift. So many times we stand, and as I was the shyest person in my daddy's church, hardest thing in the world was to take a step forward. I understand that. So today it doesn't really matter if you come forward or stand and just lift your hand. Listen, this is just the beginning. You will follow him, and he will be your Lord. He'll be the one that makes the way and fixes what you can't fix. 
all our heads are bowed and no one is looking around for privacy, would you lift your hand and say, Lord, I, or Pastor, I want that free gift in my life. And the devil's telling me I can't do it, but I know he'll help me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. What if I try and I fail? He'll get you back up. We'll be right there with you, helping you. We'll be there to have your back. God bless you. God bless you. I want all of us to pray with our new family members that are coming into the kingdom right now. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. That's how much you love me. I receive your blood to wash me and cleanse me. I invite you to live in my life. Live through me. I know that you died for me. They buried you to conquer death, hell, and my grave forever. I believe on the third day, you conquered death. And right now, you're conquering all death that applies to my life so that I may live eternally with you. Beginning this moment, I boldly declare, I am a child of the Most High God. He is my Father. Jesus is my elder brother. I am a child of the King. Holy Spirit, fill me with power to know how to stand, to say no to flesh, and yes to your Spirit. Strengthen me, guide me, direct me. And use me for your purpose in Jesus' name. While well, our heads are bowed for just a moment, I want you to stay focused on what God is wanting to do in your family. When God saved the tribes of Judah, when God spared them from death in that day of battle, God is saying, I want to save all of your household. But you don't know, they've been hurt, they're angry, they're wounded. God knows how to heal us from the offenses and the abuses and the sorrows and the wrong mess in our path. He knows how to fix that. He's going to, he's going to finish it. He's going to make a way where it just seems like there is no way. Thank you for it, Lord. We stand in agreement today for a lot of purposes, a lot of privileges. Sometimes we just need someone to join hearts with us. I appreciated your testimony. Would you come and bring the young lady with you? Would you both of you come for just a minute? Would you mind? We all need someone just to strengthen us. Anybody feel love in this house? Amen. I want to touch you, can I? Would you join us, ladies? Today, the battle is coming to an end. When I looked at you, the Lord said, I want understanding of how much I love. Don't even consider life, pain, past, hurts. He's not looking for that. He's looking for you. Just to let him love you. God has begun to work in advance for the path that you're walking on now. That's why he's brought some people around you even closer than ever before to strengthen your life. We're so honored that you're here. We're also honored that we will have you in our lives for eternity. And we're honored that God's going to be the one that fights your battles. When you're all alone and your mind goes raging over the pains, just let God have all that. God is causing a new beginning of peace and joy and love and his favor. Doesn't matter what anybody points an ugly accusing finger and they think they know your heart. They don't know you. God knows you. They may be angry and hateful, but God is everlasting, loving, caring, forgiving, constantly, constantly forgiving and repairing and restoring. So I speak peace to your heart. You can't explain it to anyone, and in time you, you'll, you'll attempt that. But right now the Lord is saying, I'm going to hold you so tight that I'm going to squeeze out all the, the venom and the poisons and the pains of yesterday to give you a brand new beginning, new hope and new peace. We can all say it together, but I want you to say it too. I'm special to God. I'm so loved. I get a new beginning. This time I have help. 
from the one that loves me the most, has the best plans for my future. And for those involved in my life, I want God's will. I want His blessings for them. They may be struggling, but they can find their way to the foot of the cross where every good and perfect gift takes place. So we just speak peace to you right now in Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement say, we speak peace. It's over, and it's a new beginning. Thank you. When Kathy spoke that word about baptism as a formula, it's a type. It means once you get up from the dead, it means you're new. Everything's buried. It's all over. How many of you thank God he's that kind of a God? Proud of you. I want you to hear that. Proud of you. They let me. And you stand strong right now. I pick on a few around here that know that they're my right arms of help and strength. But a lot of lives are finding their way. And you, you know how to guide them with love. So proud of you. That's why God's answering some of your great requests because you've been answering. Come on. How many know if you sow life, you get life? If you sow healing, you get healing. So keep on doing it. Keep loving each other. You may be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I'm pick on you, okay? I'd have you come up here, but that's a long walk. I'll tell you how old I am if that don't hurt you. I've been in ministry 57 years, okay? I recognize pain. I recognize unfairnesses. I recognize that we get here and sometimes the people that should have been there to strengthen and love us and help us weren't turn their back on us or they abandon or they hurt us. All that's turning around now. It's like God is saying, what you didn't get that you needed, you're going to have it and give it away. You're going to be a blessing because you've got a powerful gift of encouraging. People listen to you. They watch you. I don't know if it's the smile or the beard, but they love you. Amen. If I had enough hair, I'd grow my son. My nephew's got one that big. So. But how many of you realize this is an internal thing that's taking place? Isn't it? This is what happens when life takes its course. But expect things to change. When you start to make decisions, stop a minute. Okay? Will you help him? He'll help you. Encourage each other. Y'all related? No? He's kind of brother from another mother. And sometimes it's hard, especially in a different setting where you don't know everybody. God's got you. You know what's amazing? Each of you have come from a different source. Each of you have been through different things. That doesn't matter. You're going to find yourself just standing still a while, letting God do what you can't do. And you're going to watch when things begin to finish this thing. You're going to wonder, what in the world did I, why did I let all that? It's not important. Let it go. Let it go. You're a new creation. All the old things have passed away, and you're very special. I just got to say it, very special. And what's beautiful about it is we get to have you in our lives so we can, if you need us, Anybody realize we need people sometimes? And you need people that are not going to beat up on you. People are going to lift you. People are not going to try to figure you out. They're just going to say, hey, that's where you are. We're going to pray. We're going to let God bring comfort to your life and bring hope and peace. But what's taking place right now is one of the most phenomenal things that's ever happened. God gave April the vision for the wake. and I mean, we miss her because I have to sing in Columbus by myself. I got no organ. I stole my Tyler. But that's the way it's supposed to be. Lives are being changed. I'm thankful for your part in it. Thanks for allowing us to have a little place in your life. I'm not going to leave you out. I love you. I'm glad you're here. Look at big old smile right there. Isn't that awesome? You know it's true, right? You're blessed. I saw God slamming a door that you can't slam, okay, closing up. And you're walking into a new place. Let it all go. Just enjoy your life. Now you've got people around you that have your back people that really care about what really matters in your life. They're not judgmental. They're not hateful, are they? They're loving and kind. Go to Bob Evans. You'll get a good meal. Amen. How many realize we need to recognize we're a family? Because whether you know it or not, this world's in trouble, and we need each other. Come on. Everybody say, we need each other. When I was a kid, I thought church was all those religious-minded old folks. And I realized the real church is people that care, people that love, and people that will have your back. And it's not just today. We have your back, and we're going to strengthen. 
Just let him have it. He's bigger than all that. Find yourself crying once in a while. But, but it's sweet tears. It's happy tears. Everybody say, it's happy tears. My right arm. It's not over yet. It's never going to be. When God starts fighting for us, details mess with us. But it doesn't mess with God. He's going to finish everything He promised. I'm mean, God is always faithful. And He's on time. Everybody say, He's on time. Susan was telling me that the baby that we had prayer for that's born with some pains, problems, found out the baby's okay. They're threatening, well, it might have problems later. I mean, no, God doesn't start anything that He doesn't finish. Am I right? Everybody say, God doesn't start anything that He doesn't finish. You know what's amazing, and I'll pick on Gabby, because even the one up there singing and belting it out and blessing all of our lives, you don't know the battles that she fights. But I'm going to repeat to you, just stand. You know this battle's not yours because you can't do it. He's going to do it. I saw blood flowing through your heart, warm. Just so you understand, I saw it like blue lips turn pink. Fresh blood flow. God never finishes in our time. He finishes in His time. He's perfect. Father, take away the treachery of fears and thoughts, what ifs. You preserved her for such a time as this. And we're so thankful. She's blessed all of our lives. She's encouraged us all. Hasn't always been easy to fight from the valley and fight from the questions and the pains, but she's faithful. And you're the rewarder of the diligent seeker. We've never sown anything that you won't let us reap. So she's cast so much healing seed, you're going to let her reap it in her own body. We claim that and we do agree. Just felt something strong today. If you'll just leave your hand there for just a moment. It wasn't reality, but when you were standing, I saw your lips turning blue. And the Lord said, I'm going to give her back the blood flow from her heart. I'm giving back her strength. That's my daughter, and she is pleasing me. And she's standing strong, and she's standing still, and she will see the salvation of the Lord, and she will see the victory that only I can bring. We give you that kind of praise. We give you that kind of glory. But everybody's saying everything is going to be all right. Come on, say it out loud. Everything is going to be all right. Would everybody just reach over and take the hand of the one beside you and say, I got you. And you're going to be accountable to my love and my God. And if I see pain coming your way, I'm going to add added strength. Amy, Amy, hold her hand real tight. How many of you know that we often think that when God does something, it's just boom, it's all over? No, it's a battle. We start it off. He's got you. He's got all of it. I'm not having you come down front because that's embarrassing, but please. I don't want you to see Amy and her encouragement. I want you to see us. I want you to see the Lord with his arms reaching out saying, I want to hold you tighter. Can I ask you if you'll do this? In spite of thinking about it, worrying about it, processing it, just stand still. Because there's things we can't do at all. No matter how brilliant, no matter what, it's not your battle, it's his. He loves you too much to say, I'm walking away. He's never done that. And Father, you're untangling the webs also that have been woven against her. You're creating a new beginning of life. It's hard when we see it in the natural. It hurts, especially when it's church-related or Christian-related or friend-related. It breaks. I speak peace to you now in Jesus' name because God loves you, and he's going to finish what your faith has begun. We agree in Jesus' name. We agree in Jesus' name. We agree in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's all point our hand towards Sherry. Father, we reach out for Cindy. We ask you to finish your work in her body. She's been through months, hospitalization, therapies. It was just questions and fears. Lord, I thank you because my faith says in her agreement, and as a family, we agree that she just stands now and watches you finish what faith has started. Touch everything and everyone that she loves and reach inside of her body to fix what's been hurt for so long. Restore. 
Give her back her youth, the beauty for her ashes, the oil of joy for her mourning season. We claim it all, and we thank you because your word doesn't fail. Your word never falls to the ground. Your promises are yes. Your promises are amen. We do claim it, and we do accept it for the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want everyone to lift up your right hand and say, Lord, I affirm to you that I've been trying to fight my battles, picking my wars, choosing my battles. I give them all up today because in your kingdom, there's no place for my battle. There's only place for you to win and get glory as you take over my battle. Father, I curse diseases in this room today. I command organs that are failing to stop failing, begin to live again. I curse everything from cancer and diabetes to sickle cell to upper respiratory tract infections, and I speak to the bodies that are not breathing properly and the organs like the heart and the lungs that are malfunctioning. Come on, say it with me, Lord. Heal us, and we will be healed. Give us back our life. It's only a battle from the enemy. And we will not buy into this battle. But we give it to you. You'll bury it in your tomb. You'll resurrect life. And give me back my life. Finish the healings that faith has started. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord keeps saying in my spirit, tell my children they're on a journey. It's not over. But when it's finished, I will bring forth glory. And they will come forth as pure gold. Take a stand, saints. Take a stand. And God will give you total independence. Can I say it? What are you depending on? What is your source? What are you depending on for your joy, your love, your peace? What are you depending on? You have to become dependent on Him. Nobody, no thing. Man can fail. God will never fail. Everybody say, the battle is not mine. The battle is the Lord's. I want everybody to practice something. I want you to touch somebody on the shoulder and say, I'm, I'm going to enter into my healing ministry. Well, you're not Oral Roberts. You're not either. But just say, be healed in Jesus' name. Come on, let them know you got that power. The one inside of you can talk through you. Tell them, be healed in Jesus' name. Can we give him a little bit of praise? Can we clap our hands and thank him? Any more announcements, Pastor Ted? Would you say this with me out loud? Father, this is going to be my most independent, set free time of life. I am free. I am independent from all the bondage, all the junk, even that. And I'm going to live dependent on God, totally and completely. Did anybody hear this today? If you will, let somebody know you love them by a big old grin. Amen. Love each other as you go today. We want you to be your king.